Sandy Baydash has asked to have flexibility as her virtue, and so Sandy is going to share what that is for her. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. There you go. Today's um, virtue, flexibility, uh, was really exciting because I had just done a painting. And I said, my gosh, I'm going to bring it in. It really embodies flexibility. And it is called Acrobats and Jugglers, as you can see. And, and I wanted that movement. Um, it's flexibility, obviously, of the body. And now we want to, of course, for ourselves, think about beyond into our mind and soul. I'm sure all of you remember Gilda Radner from Saturday Night Live. She was so fun, and she was such a talent, but also uh, died very young. And she did write something which was um, dedicated to flexibility, really, in the highest form. And I'd like to read it to you. She said, I wanted a perfect ending. Now I've learned that some poems don't rhyme, and some stories don't have a clear beginning, middle, or end. Life is about not knowing, having to change, taking the moment and making the best of it without knowing what's going to happen next. Now, the other thing that I wanted to say at first, this is what I was going to do before I read that uh, quote from Gilda. I went to see what rhymed with flexibility and there were so many wonderful things that meant flexibility. So here's the list, flexibility, was adaptability, versatility, malleability, possibility, mobility, fluidity, agility, acceptability. And then I went for the opposite. What's the opposite of flexibility? And that word is rigid. To not be flexible is to be rigid. And I went looking for the word that rhymed with rigid. And the one word that I found <laughs> was frigid. <laughs> I'm going for flexibility. <laughs> Amen. Those are great words. Wow, malleability. Compatibility, capability, well. Did you see earlier, did you note, well, and it is now, the bamboo is a theme that's running through all of our PowerPoints. You see that stand of bamboo? It's interesting, when you learn about bamboo, it's actually one plant. The root structures are very shallow, and bamboo has this incredible strength. It's very prolific. It grows, reaching up to the sun, into the light. And each of the sections is essentially hollow. It's the call that you and I have to be like hollow bamboo. And yet, even though there seems to be this emptiness in each of the sections, each of the sections is a conduit for the chi, a conduit for the prana, a conduit for the life force to move up and out. And it starts always by that inwardness. So like bamboo, Flexibility is the capacity to bend without breaking. And you and I are called in life, of course, to change. But there's a willingness when we remember that we have an innate flexibility, there's a willingness for us to change because we're going to anyway. Huh? How do we feel when we are changed? Like somebody says, you're going to change. And they force it on us, right? Well, let's stay flexible and lean into life. So what happens is people who have, we who have, when we have, I should say, flexible minds, we're more open to shifting our own consciousness whenever it's necessary or when it might be useful in our lives. And to do that, we let go of attachment. And so that's letting go of having to have things exactly the way you want it. I want everybody to open their hands right now and just give me a sigh. <sighs> you mean things aren't going to be exactly the way I think they should be? Another sigh. <sighs> 
There's a greater plan taking place in your world. And sometimes there is something that is rigid that comes into your purview, and it always is there as an opportunity for you to move that mountain through your faith. And we move that mountain by walking into, up, onto, and through it. We face it. And that's what flexibility or people with flexible minds have. It enables us to take advantage of the opportunities that are before us. And when we're rigid, sometimes, oftentimes, we simply miss it altogether because we're in that intractability. Life is a lot more fun when we stay flexible. And we know that. Everybody know that? Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah. It's much more fun. And yet there are those hard times. And with flexibility, we can allow the unexpected, the unplanned, that which we refer to with hindsight as miracles, we can allow the miraculous to take place. And for the universe, the multiverse in which we live, the one power and one presence of God to surprise us and to bring that power and presence through us. And it always happens in uh, inexplicable ways. In... Uh, Mark, one of Mark Nepo's books, and it's the uh, Book of Awakening, which is a 365 days of the year. We, we have one, I think, available in the bookstore. They're ready and willing to order more for you. There is a story in there about Ted Sean. You may or may not know about Ted Sean. I, I know about Ted Sean because he has a story that's uh, amazing. And I'd heard of him before, and that reminded me. Ted was born in Kansas City, Missouri in 1891, and he was a divinity student. Kansas City has seven major divinity schools, including Unity Institute, our Unity Worldwide Campus is there. And he was a, while he was a divinity student, he was struck with polio. Polio, we know, causes a rigidity to come into the body temple as a physical condition is something that affects us physically. And so while he was moving into that and through that idea of even having polio, somewhere, from somewhere, deep within him, the Christ in him, his hope of glory, if you will, and a very unlikely voice said to him, dance. He heard the word dance. And he didn't have any clue how he could possibly do that in a time when the medical paradigm was telling him, you're going to become less and less able to even move. But Ted didn't listen to that voice. He listened to the still small voice. And he began with great difficulty because by this time he was already feeling rigidity in his bones, his muscles, his fibers, his tissues. With great difficulty and yet with great resolve, he began to move. He began to soften into those areas that had become rigid. He began to move, and his move looked slow. It looked very stilted. It looked quite different from anything that was classical dance up until that point. And so as he regained, because Ted not only regained the use of his legs and was able to dance. Not only that, he became one of the fathers of what we today call modern dance. That is how modern dance had its beginning, because there wasn't a way to move classically in a balletic way, but there was the ability to have shortened movements, precise movements, elongated movements, if there was a willingness of those who would do that dance to be flexible and to keep moving. What's compelling for us, though, to realize when I tell you this story is that it was, it was not studying about God that gave Sean the ability to move. It wasn't about gathering together with people to talk about God or a theology. It was Sean's willingness to live his theology, to really know that God was every, every part of him, to believe that, to know himself to be, as Myrtle Fillmore did, a divine child of God. Embodying God is what changed his life. Embodying God is what changes our lives. I was just talking about it. 
That's just thinking about it. But actually being flexible and moving with that. In Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. And so I say, Sean, leaning to the arms of God. How many times have you not known what to do? You couldn't do, you couldn't move, you couldn't think, you couldn't figure it out. And you just relaxed and leaned into the life of God within you and trusted, and it all worked out. So just as we create flexibility in our bodies by stretching physically, we can create more limber minds by stretching mentally. And we're called to do that every single day. You know, now you read about well, how can we keep our minds young and fresh, and they encourage us to learn a new language. Anybody here learning a new language? Yeah? So learning, learning a new language. Uh, mathematics is a language. Science is a language. Music is a language. Bring something new and fresh into your mind, and it takes flexibility to do that. In the Daily Word, this month's Daily Word, which is our... Hi is our uh, inspirational magazine uh, it, that Unity publishes. They always come in two-month uh, issues now. So in the March-April issue, one of the lead stories is by Mark Matusik. And Mark is a, a Unity person, so it's always good to see how this is being applied. Mark contextualizes himself as a hardcore New York guy. That's how he was. He didn't care about anything spiritual. What is spiritual? What do you mean? And at the age of 20, with this laissez-faire way of living, he was diagnosed with a um, fatal medical diagnosis. And when he had that, like, cold water, ice-cold water of that a diagnosis splashed all over him. He suddenly realized that he had developed no inner life for himself. He had no sustainable practices. He didn't have a spiritual community. He didn't know anything about the God of his own being. No relationship had been formed to date. And so for the next 20 years, he, called him, he calls himself uh, that during those, I'm sorry, the next 10 years, he was a Dharma bum. That's how he contextualizes himself. And he went everywhere. He went to gurus, he went to mountaintops, he went to monasteries, and he began to ask himself and God the deep questions that he had never, ever asked before because he thought, well, if I'm going to go, I at least want to go, knowing that I've taken the time to find out about this. This energy that indwells apparently everyone which I've never given myself credit to know. And then he found out something very surprising. The diagnosis had been a false alarm. He found out 10 years after the diagnosis had been given him. So what happened was his whole life changed. He was so grateful that he had received this gift of the diagnosis, and he just upgraded his life as a result. He has become a writer. He's written five books. One of them is called When You Are Falling, dive. And so in the Daily Word, this is what he says, when we surrender to these forces of, when we surrender to these forces of change that are larger than we are, we meet challenge, our challenges with more grace. He says on page eight, I've discovered that the main thing separating people who thrive in adversity from those who don't is the willingness to change and start anew. If we think we're going to be the same person after our lives are shaken up, we make our healing process so much harder. What helps is the willingness to reinvent ourselves. And this creativity requires us to move into an unknown space, which can be frightening. But also, paradoxically, this brings us to life. There is a fear, but also a deeper engagement with our own existence. It's like what Sandy said. It's those words that she used. It calls up within us our adaptability, our versatility, our malleability, possibilities in our lives spring forward when we stay open to change. And I don't know where, you know, I realized this morning quite 
in my prayer time, sort of a sudden thing came to me I'd never thought of before. Do you realize how flexible you are to be in Naples, Florida? <laughs> really, let's just notice it, right? We live in a place, we are willing to open our hearts to have radical hospitality with each other, to have generous, contagious generosity with each other and the places that support us, knowing that that person, those situations, may not be there for six months of the year. We have a whole population that shifts out, and some it's three months, some it's six months. Some of us just stay here and hold this sacred space. Yes, let's hear it. <laughs> And I want to say, we aren't aware, I'm not aware of act actually everybody who's going to go and everybody who's going to stay. I just know that everyone here is amazing. And I see you guys being flexible. I see you opening your heart anyway, even though that person may take off and go someplace else to another beautiful home. I just want to say, as an invitation from someone who now makes Naples my home, we miss you guys when you go, and please come and stay longer. <laughs> we love you being here, but the thing is, the people who go north go north because they love being where they go. They have family and friends that support them, and that's who we go to when we get rigid. It's our friends and family who love us enough to say, there's something going on here. Can we notice this together? I want you to open up your heart and mind. I love you. And the communities that we have all over the world can sustain us in that way. In the book of Revelations, you know, it reminds us that the old of our life is going to pass away. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a new world. Every single day, every moment of the way, there's going to be a new world. So I want you to raise your hand, if you would, and you can take a moment to consider this. Raise your hand if you know that you are a divine child of God. Now, those of you who have not raised your hand, leave your hand up there. That's a really good thing to do. Now, put your other hand up with it. Create a funnel. Do you feel that funnel? You look like a field of bamboo, a, a <laughs> forest of bamboo, hollow bamboo. You're creating a funnel for the holy presence to pour through you. And as you do, you become softer, more malleable, more flexible. Those of you who leave your hands up through the entire service are going to have the youngest looking hands. <laughs> you can put them down anytime. And so I say to you, because Jesus said, bring the little children to me. It's by becoming like a little child that we enter into the kingdom. Let's just pretend that we are a very small group, like a circle of children. And we know ourselves to be children of God. And so I'm going to bring out a ball. This particular one has a smiley face on it. And it's a very soft ball. It's a malleable ball. It's one that can be squeezed. And so I'm going to pass this ball around to the children, you, the children of God, who know who you are. I'm going to ask them to squeeze the ball and see how they feel. Just squeeze that ball and see how you feel. How do you feel? She feels gentler as she squeezes the ball. Anything else? Pliable. Wow, you feel pliable. Richard, how do you feel? Are you willing to take that ball? She stole your word. She stole your word. <laughs> I know what you feel like. You feel like a pitcher. That's what you feel like. And it's, yeah. So we have this soft ball. And we have this rock. Now, what I'm representing to you right now is two mindsets, a flexible mindset and a tough, hard, rock-like mindset. How do you feel holding that? Weighed down. She feels weighed down. How does that feel to you, Frank? Oh, yeah, well, Frank fell over. Oh. All right. So I get to <laughs> That was cute, Frank, yeah. So this represents a hard, a rigid mindset, if you will. So... What I would talk with the children and talk with you about is life. In life we have, it says in scripture, we have trials and tribulations. Don't worry, I've overcome those. So how did Jesus as the Christ overcome those? 
we have in life these two mindsets. And when you and I are willing to face a problem, face a trial, face a tribulation, whatever it is, bef is before you today, as a soft vessel of the Holy Spirit, like a hollow bamboo, then we are in that moment flexible thinkers. When we're flexible thinkers, we're able to move our brains, able to move around a problem. It's able to look at it from all different aspects, to think of creative ways to, and, and various solutions. And then we have the rock thinker, rock thinkers. Anybody here ever been a rock thinker? Oh, yeah. Rock thinking is rigid. It is frigid. <laughs> rock thinking is not able to move freely around the problem. Rock thinking forms its opinion. That's the way it is, my way or the highway, and <laughs> we draw a line between ourselves and the rest of the world. Well, what's happening? is you're actually, when we do that, we actually draw a line between aspects of ourselves and ourself. Because we are all cells in the one body. Rock thinking keeps us stuck in one place. So if you find that you're not able to consider something with another vantage point, we have a whole community to do that with. That's why we have family and now extended family. You want to go, by the way, to those who know you to those who love you, appreciate you, and care enough to be honest with you so that you can be honest with yourself and notice, oh, no big deal. I'm just being a rock thinker. I can, because I have it in me, I can also be a flexible thinker. Do you see those two mindsets? You see them with your eyes? Can you feel it? So this may well be happening in your life. I'm going to ask you a question. Which is more fun to play with? <laughs> How would it be for you right now if I took the rock and just tossed it out into the congregation? Like, here, catch. <laughs> we not only hurt ourselves by being inflexible, we potentially hurt others. Even without knowing that we're hurting, we want to be playful, but we may say something that's actually hurtful, and we put it out there. And once it's out there, it's out there. Molly Friedenfeld says, yielding flexibility is a virtue of an ever-expanding heart. So how flexible are you being? For me, it depends in my life, seems to depend upon if I'm experiencing any kind of fear. And I know it really clearly to be an acronym that means forgetting everything's all right. When I'm not trusting in God and I'm forgetting that everything's all right or I feel some sense of resistance because I think my way has to be the right way, that's when I start to become attached. And when I become attached to that, I realize that situations, relationships, and experiences in my life are upsetting me, that they're frustrating me because I'm not in trusting. The flip side of that is that I know that I'm more flexible when I am living into, leaning into, breathing into clarity, focus, ease, and grace, and then I can move through anything. You can move through anything. Today, we are being more challenged to be flexible than we were ever challenged to be flexible before. The, uh, the workforce now is not meeting in the same way that the workforce used to meet. We don't go to central places anymore exactly like we used to do. It's not, clear. it's not as clear as it was earlier on in our lives. And yet we have a whole population of people doing this. There is a world of invisibility that is supporting us as we move through whatever's before us to be more and more flexible. And it's only due to our own fear, or our own resistance, our own stress or desire to be right that we frustrate our prana, our energy. Because God is fully present in you, and you can do it anyway. And by the way, we frustrate others as well. At least that's what I've been told. <laughs> so let's be clear. Being flexible is not being weak. Being flexible is not being passive. Being flexible is making constant cho conscious choices. It's a powerful skill. 
And it's a valuable approach as you lean in to move through this ever-evolving experience of what it is to be in a human body. We can be firm in our convictions. We can be passionate about our beliefs. We can be clear with our own intentions. And at the same time, be flexible enough to make significant changes in our lives and to lean into whatever gifts, a new sense of grace, God is giving us. This and something better. So here are some of the key elements. One, you can, you can, you can hold your hand out if you want to, and I'm just going to go, there's five. So let go of your attachment to what you think it has to be. How about that? What is this a sign for? Do what? Look up? Did you? Good job. Yeah, good job. Let go of your attachment. If you're holding on to something that's really heavy duty, that's really hard and rigid, just drop it. Just let it go. Let go of your attachment. Be willing to be wrong. Put that finger out there. Go ahead. I'm willing to, am I, are you willing to be wrong? I am willing to be wrong. Let's repeat that affirmation. I am willing to be wrong. Because every time we are wrong, quote, unquote, about something, we learn something new. It's like amazing. We just didn't know up until that point. So be willing to be wrong. Ralph Steadman says there's no such thing as a mistake, really. It's just an opportunity to do something else, <laughs> right? Three, don't take yourself so daggum seriously. Yes, you heard your minister say that. Don't take yourself so daggum seriously. Life is here to lighten us up. I think it's beautiful. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. The light of the world. And four is, go with the flow. Just lean into it. There is a natural flow of the divine in your life, I promise you. It is, in fact, how you came here. It is how you will move beyond here. It is that instantaneous love of God that is all there truly is. And five, get the support and the feedback from others so that you can create for yourself and for them a full experience of God's kingdom and live it here. Oh, is this easier said than done? Sometimes. Sometimes. But that's a belief that you and I do not have to stay rock-like about. Allow yourself to know that today, this day, I can be flexible. I am flexible. God is my flexibility. And just as with our physical bodies, as we stretch, let's pay more attention, if you will, on the expanding quality of life, and then we're much more likely to flex ourselves into it. This week, I see you choosing enhancing, life-enhancing ways of exponentially leaning into God and feeling God's grace soften you. God bless.